We have a Hulk, mate. That's not a Hulk. This is a Hulk. That was a terrible intro. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and today I'm going to be painting some 3D prints. I have a teeny weeny 3D printed Hulk and a large 3D printed Hulk, both of which are high resolution prints. The teeny weeny one took about 7 hours to print and the big bulky one took about 57 hours to print. But as you can see the printing results are pretty good, there are a couple of imperfections and lines here and there but the actual layers, leveling levels of the print, I don't know what you'd call it, aren't too visible. There is a bit of cleanup required, so I'm going to sand it back a bit and I'm going to do a, a base coat and all that stuff. While I've never painted 3D prints before and never looked up how to paint 3D prints tutorials, which I probably should have done, I like to improvise. So I bought a whole bunch of Warhammer painting materials and I'm just going to hope for the best and hope that it, it actually, you know, does a decent job painting them. Maybe not, I don't know, but it's the only thing I know is Warhammer, painting Warhammer. Is that that's how I paint miniatures. It's my only frame of reference. So I've got some colors I selected in Citadel paints to paint my Hulk with and I'll go through the layers and how I go through that later but I'm going to start off with a bit of cleanup and some undercoat. Now I actually got black and white mainly because I intend to I guess do some more miniature painting or 3D print painting in the future but for the Hulk because we're going for a green I didn't know which one to base coat with so I'm actually thinking I'll base coat with black a couple of times and then do a light white on top hopefully getting somewhere in the middle because I think black or white for the base coat to put green on top of will either be too dark and muddy or too garish and bright. Beyond that these are the other tools I got just some glue again a lot of this is just for future videos or paints or whatever but I also got this pack of random orc miniatures. I didn't get these to paint the orcs I actually got these for the bases which was a waste of money because they're too small. Great job Jazz, I really thought that one through. <laughs> but that's okay because maybe in a future video I'll either paint these characters or just use those bases for maybe my own custom tabletop army that I 3D print. Let me know if I should do that and maybe what my army should be. That could be a really fun future video. Anyways, I'm going to get started with this video painting my hulks, cleaning up with a bit of sanding and then doing a base coat and then we're going to start to put on some colours and hope it works. That's how I spend a majority of my professional life. Improvising and hoping it works. It usually does, so I guess there's a reason I keep doing it. <laughs> I took my hulks outside into my well-ventilated exterior backyard to spray paint my first coats of paint, because as always kids, Safety first. Spraying lightly and evenly over the hulks, I came to realize quickly that the paint was picking up a lot of the details of the 3D print. Specifically, some of the occasionally more obvious layering and quite a lot of those little hairs that were hard to sand off. So I went and bought a Dremel tool, which I'd never used before, but had a feeling would sort out those finer details. I didn't need to read the instruction manual because I'm such a professional, but I did wear goggles and gloves in case of my lack of experience with the Dremel backfire in any violent ways. Again, safety first. With the rough areas now refined, I took my hulky hulks back for another coat of black undercoat, and when that was dry, I put on a final mist of white, not too heavy and only spraying from a higher angle, so it would only fall into and fill the areas likely to be hit with light. And you gotta admit, even as just a base coat, these guys are starting to look pretty damn epic. So here is the result of my undercoating and just like that it looks amazing. Now you can see the details of the 3D print actually show a lot more with that base coat. In fact there are still just a couple of little like, I guess you'd call them hairs from uh, just the bits of the 3D print that were a bit stringy. Now I managed to remove most of them by both sanding and then using the Dremel tool to sort of polish the surface almost. But as you can see, there are, there are occasionally, I mean, I did an okay job, but here you go. There are occasionally a few little bits that are just worth getting rid of right at the end here. But even though it brings out some of the unfortunate details on occasion, which are still fixable, the details in general that it brings out just in the, the character are phenomenal. And then check out the details of our teeny, teeny Hulk here. He's still, even though he's so small, has come up pretty clean. There's probably a few little straggler threads that I could remove here. And again, the detail for a print 
this big is amazing. It's blowing my mind. If you're curious about the printing process, by the way, I did make a video when I made these 3D prints among a bunch of others. So I'll link to that in the card and in the description. But now that I have my pieces base coated, they're ready to paint. So I'm going to cover the surface of my table with just this plastic mat underneath. And I'm going to get started with my paints in order. And these are just your average Citadel paints. So I'm going to go through the process of painting these bad boys and uh, see how cool I can make make them look. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I plan to approach painting these dudes the same way I used to paint my Warhammer figurines. Starting off with the darker base of flat colour in the main areas of the figures, painting them both one colour at a time, taking each figure in turn. Next, I filled in the shadows using a matte brown ink, again part of the Citadel painting set. I brushed this watery ink over the entirety of both characters so it settled into the crevices and details of the muscles and features. I chose a brown ink because it would give both the skin and pants of the hulks a more earthy gritty tone, much more than if I would have used green ink for the skin and purple ink for the pants, which would just make him look too cartoony. After my first layer of shadow was down, I went back and doubled down in some areas I wanted to make sure had a lot of shadowy contrast and were a little more refined. And then when the second layer of shadow was dry, I came back with my original base colour green and purple and refined the transitions between the shadows and light a bit. Next came the layering of lighter colours, which would really bring out the details. Normally with Warhammer figurines, I'd paint quite clear areas of colour, but because these figurines are both a little and a lot larger, I went for a heavier dry brush technique, which made for a softer visual transition and more of a skin-like aesthetic. Both the skin and the pants have two layers of lighter colour, the lightest of which in both the green and the purple had a different tint of hue. By that I mean that the lightest layer of green skin had a slightly yellow hue to it and the lightest layer of the purple pants had a slightly pink hue to them. This makes it more visually interesting and prevents the figure looking too bland or monotonous and sort of makes these areas pop out a bit more. Now it was time for the detail. I was rusty from my old Warhammer 40k days when I used to occasionally don my own homemade one brush bristle and go into all crazy kinds of detail. But even so, with a lot of patience and careful movement, I slowly put in the fine details of the face and the expression on the hulks. I wanted a little base for my small hulk so he looks a bit like a tabletop figurine so I found a piece of scrap card and cut a circle as clean as I could and after a few layers of black I slowly laid in textured paints, terrain rocks and ink washes, dry brushing and finally a touch of fake grass. Last but not least I gave both hulks a fine layer of matte varnish top coat for protection and popped the mini hulk and his base together bringing this hulk of a project to its completion. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, these are my finished painted 3D printed hulks, a biggie and a little-y. The funny thing is I don't think I can prefer one over the other, there's something just incredibly satisfying about having a teeny weeny hulk. And I think when all the detail is like really condensed and you can get into the nitty gritties, holding them and moving them around and having this little base here as if he's like a tabletop figurine, it's just really cool and takes me back to my Warhammer 40k days. But the big guy is so cool because all of the visceral details, the veins and the facial expression and all that stuff are really easy to paint and work with because they're all there. And the best part is they look like they're ready to duke it out in a fight to the death. <laughs> Hulk smash! Hulk smash! <laughs> uh, 
I'm tired. I've been doing this for two days. <laughs> I also left the bottom of the feet unpainted so you can see what the original 3D printed filament looks like compared to the final painted figurine. Aside from seeing some of the 3D printed layer lines, which I could have spent more time cleaning up, but I really wanted to get to painting, you really can't tell that it's a 3D printed figure. And this gives me a lot of hope and a lot of excitement for future sculpts that I'll create. Now, of course, I didn't sculpt this Hulk. This was my 3D printer test, and now it's my 3D printed painting test. So now is where I start thinking about what characters or creatures I could sculpt in 3D, print, and then paint as epically as possible. Leave me your suggestions in the comments down below. If you like the result of this epic project and the video overall, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Draw With Jazza for more fun with art and creativity. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.